I've heard a lot about you. I asked to speak to DS Nixon. Yeah, I love you too. She's very busy. She asked me to pass on her best wishes, though. Now, I understand that you've been on the receiving end of some threats. Is that right? Anonymous letters, phone calls in the middle of the night. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Any idea who's behind it? Well, if I knew who was behind it, they wouldn't be anonymous, would they? <laughs> That's a good point. So tell me, what's the, what's the content of these phone calls and letters? They're threats. Yeah, I know, but what type of threats? Threats to kill you? To hurt you? Like you hurt your victims? No, really, I'm interested. How do these people want to hurt you? I don't believe a word he says. This kid is not being threatened. It's just some pony excuse to see you. Strangely, I'm not flattered. Sarge, now what? Kennedy's refusing to leave and talking about making a formal complaint. He says Terry didn't show him sufficient respect. Why don't I go downstairs and give you something to complain about? Uh, Terry. Tell him I'm on my way. He's playing mind games with you, Sarge. Don't get involved with the geezer. I'm already involved. See you in court, then, yeah? Right, so. It's not all bad news. Thanks to your information, the Fly Squad are about to interview a guy about a number of jewelry robberies. Does that mean I'll get a reward? I won't hold your breath on that. I've spoken to CPS and told them how healthy you've been. Who knows? Maybe the magistrates might take it into account when it comes to sentencing. So we won't have to have my baby in prison? Just stop stealing stuff, yeah? If I have a boy, I'm going to call him Steve. It's like you got yourself a bit of an admirer there. Well, what can I say? It's my natural charm. Boyishly handsome, good looks. Get over yourself. Oh, come on. Just because we're not going out with you there doesn't mean we can't have a laugh, does it? Of course not. What is wrong with you today? One minute you're right with me, and the next minute you're like, whoa, back off. Yeah, I've just got a lot on my mind, that's all. Well, just sort it out, because you're starting to confuse me. Oh, I see you brought yourself a chaperone. I'm sure he won't be necessary. So, what do you want? Hello, D.S. Nixon. How are you? Oh, don't be like that. Get to the point. I've been threatened. The real point. Seriously. I have been threatened. So what are you after? Police protection? Would you offer that? I'm sure I can arrange for someone to keep an eye on you. You must have been so angry when that undercover reporter blew your case. Manager smile when she died, did you? I don't get pleasure out of other people's suffering. Not even mine. We're more alike than you know, Samantha. We understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. You came here to tell me that, did you? And to see how you're faring. Yes, well, um, now you know. So soon. I caught you once, Kennedy. I'll catch you again. I'd say that's something we can both look forward to. But let me leave you with something to think about. You made me face my demons. Thanks to you, I'm a different person. Free of fear. Free of weakness. Free of doubt. I know exactly what I'm capable of. And it's all down to you. Show Mr. Kennedy out of the building. No sign. Got a possible sighting of Handel Road. Right, so we know he's not heading back for his bed sit. Kane's garage. It's about three streets away. Scott. Hi. I did try and call, but I just got your answer phone. I don't understand. What are you doing here? He was asked to come in. Yeah, forensics have finished with Karen's handbag, so they said I could come and collect it. Oh, right. Do you want me to come and find you when I'm done? Yeah, yeah, sure. This way. Hello again, Mr. Penn. Don't come charging in here right now. It's not a good idea. It's Fairfax here. Yes. Right, we need to see him. Yeah, I know, but it's not a good time. When shall we come back then? Sometime next week. I'm being serious. He's right on the edge. He's on the edge of a life sentence for murder. Yeah, well, that's the problem. That's why he don't want to come out. He's going to have to come out. Is he in the office? No. Just back off! Just back off, all right? Back off or we'll all go up!
How much has he had to drink? Enough. Look, we don't need this, Colin. What a bet. Just come out, mate. Everything will be all right. We just want to talk, that's all. You wouldn't understand anything I told you anyway. I understand you just wanted to make a point. Yeah, right. Things didn't work out how you planned. You do something. This place comes up unfinished. What's that? Chris doesn't want to see you get hurt, Colin. That's all. Well, don't whisper. I don't want anyone whispering. OK. We won't whisper as long as you don't shout, all right? Good man. I did try and phone. He said you I was coming in for us. Yeah, I know, but I thought you were calling to try and talk about what I wouldn't talk about earlier. I'm not sure how I feel about having this back. You know. The phone, purse, one glove. Funny what women keep in their handbags, isn't it? Scott. Look, I am. Um, I meant what I said earlier. I just want to be with you. You already are. No, I'm talking about the future. Our future. Look, honey, I don't want to lose you, OK? But if this isn't what you want or you're not ready, then you should just say. I don't know what I want. Oh, come on, honey. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. Come on, I'd better show you out. You'd have been better off going back to the station with Ken while you had the chance. Ken should have left me alone when he had the chance. So what happened? You see you loading petrol into the back of the van. He must have followed me back here. And he tried to stop you? I thought he'd back off again like he did at the pub, but he wouldn't. So you handcuffed him in the back of the van? He wasn't supposed to die! No one was supposed to die! I didn't want to kill anyone! I mean, I threw him the keys before I crashed the van. Why didn't he get out of there? Colin, <laughs> yeah, that's something we'll probably never know. <laughs> All I can think about is him burning in there. Yeah. OK. It's not OK, is it? I killed three people. Three people I worked with. Yeah, well, now's the time to stop. This is just going to make things worse. Colin, you've proved what you set out to prove. That Sunhill was vulnerable to a terrorist attack. Well, I proved is that I'm a complete nothing. Yeah, but you're not a terrorist. Terrorists don't feel guilty. They don't offer to give money for a collection for the victims. Terrorists usually kill themselves. And is that how you want to be remembered? As a fanatic who killed three people and then killed himself? Is that how you'd want your mum to remember you? I've no other option. I mean, what's left for me now, a trial? Yeah, but that could be a chance for you to explain yourself. I mean, you could convince the jury that you did the wrong thing, but for the right reasons. Still go to prison. Yeah, but your voice would be heard. He's right, Col. Choice is yours, Colin. You can die a forgotten martyr, or you can live, be a spokesman for the cause. Give me the lighter. Good man.
arrested you on suspicion of murder. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later learn in court. Anything you do say it may be given in evidence. Right, cuff him, Joe. <laughs>